Hey, this is Blanca Gamer, and welcome to another episode of They Made a Sequel, where I review games that you may not have heard or even expected a sequel of to just say that. This will be a special review for me because I'm covering the follow-up of one of my favorite games, Okami. Okami. Okami is an action-adventure game that was first unleashed, no pun intended, on the PlayStation 2 in 2006 by Clover Studios, who also made the Beautiful Joe games and God Hand. You play as the sun goddess Amaterasu, or Amy for short, in the form of a white wolf restoring peace of beauty in the land of Nippon, a mythological feel Japanese setting with the power of a celestial brush to interact with the environment. In fact, the whole premise of Okami is loosely based around Japanese folklore and mythology, all the while depicted in a gorgeous Japanese ink wash painting art style. But it wasn't just the look and premise of the game that won me over. The brush mechanic truly felt unique and fairly implemented, the characters and story are very memorable, and the gameplay is fun, even if heavily inspired by Legend of Zelda. What with exploring vast countrysides and dungeon-like areas, using acquired abilities to progress and defeat bosses, finding treasures, getting health upgrade pieces, and of course, the complete massacre of pottery for money and items. And before you ask, this did come out before Twilight Princess. Despite being similar to the 3D Zelda games, the game still had enough of a unique feel to it to not just be a generic Zelda clone. In short, I really like this game. I know I'm borderline fanboying, but I can't help it. I enjoyed Okami that much. I love you, Okami. Okay, that may have been a bit too far, as I can't see what little flaws there are in the game. The dialogue cutscenes get a bit long-winded and preachy at times, the Celestial Brush can be a little finicky now and then, the combat is pretty straightforward despite the three different types of weapons you can use as main and sub-weapons and the brush techniques at your disposal, some platformings can be at awkward angles, and if you're a seasoned gamer, the game isn't too difficult, with only a few of the harder fights having me resort to using healing items, although those nitpicks didn't detract too much from how much I enjoyed Okami. Besides, if you do like something, you can in turn admit to the faults they may have, even if minor. It's still a game that gives a great sense of adventure and I found it very fulfilling, not to mention being pretty humorous too. And as someone that did delve into a little bit of painting, it's sure to please the inner artist and you and how visually artistic the game is. Naturally, a game of this quality gained critical acclaim and it didn't sell a whole lot. Yeah, and even though I had my PlayStation 2 at the time, I didn't get around to getting it back then. I kinda wish I did to enjoy it sooner. The game did, however, gain a cult following, and in 2008, there was a Wii port made. I did play that version first, but opted for a PS2 copy I did find later on. Then there was the downloadable PlayStation 3 version we got last year, Okami HD, remastered in high definition with trophies, if you like achievements, and PlayStation Move support. You know, that thing that was basically a Wii controller and was used in like, six PS3 games? Well, now you can dust that off and play it like the Wii version, in 1080p! This is the version I'll mostly showcase in the review for comparison, since it's the best looking version in high definition. Well, not really HD here since I'm still using the Dazzle, but at least it's widescreen! And the sequel isn't... yeah, whatever. But before Okami HD, there was a new game made for the Nintendo DS and was released in 2011. Okami Den. While Okami Den is a sequel, it's not made by Clover since, you know, they shut down and are making kick-ass games as Platinum now. Since Capcom still owns the properties of Okami, they were naturally the publishers. While Mobile and Game Studio Incorporated, a company that made several other Japanese DS, downloadable, and mobile games, were the developers. The Nintendo DS is actually a suitable platform for an Okami game as the main gameplay feature of using the brush seems like a perfect fit with a touchscreen and stylus. Using the latter for that is especially true since that's the closest thing to using an actual brush. And to me, using a stylus would feel more natural than an analog stick or a Wii or Move controller since the last two is basically using a laser pointer to draw on a screen. However, because this is a sequel on the DS, it has to be designed with those hardware limitations in mind, which means the game obviously won't be as large scale as the previous console game. But if designed well enough for a portable game in the series, it can make up for any shortcomings. Does Okami Den achieve this? Let's find out. Right away when you begin a new game for Okami Den, you're given a choice between two play options, Old Hand and Greenhorn. Old Hand is the default normal difficulty, while Greenhorn is the easy mode with enemies having less health and ink pots for your brush being regenerated after using it. If you play through Okami or any similar action-adventure game without much problems, then you shouldn't have issues with Old Hand. 
Greenhorn is only really recommended for someone like young children. Once you pick your playstyle, the game starts off with a recap of the last game and that it takes place 9 months after Okami. Everything is at peace thanks to the heroics of Amaterasu, but we can't have that last forever if we want another Okami game now do we? And a new evil emerges to curse Nippon once again. Meanwhile, Isun, a wandering punkle artist turned celestial envoy who was Amy's companion in the previous game, is doing his job of keeping people's faith in check for Amaterasu, when suddenly imps appear to cause havoc. Luckily our pint-sized friend is saved by our hero of the game from out of nowhere, who is not Amaterasu, but a new wolf pup that is essentially her son, Chibi Terasu. Yes, his name really is Chibi. And well, I may have to temporarily relinquish my man card for this game because Chibi Terasu does live up to his name. He is adorable. Can you blame me though? I'm a sucker for puppies and the things Chibi does is just... I mean just look at him! Look at it! Look at the puppy! He's so cute! Alright, squeeing aside, because Chibi is still a pup, he doesn't have the full extent of his mother's abilities, which is actually a good excuse for the game's limitations if you think about it. Revolving the handheld sequel around Chibi instead of Amy makes sense in terms of a smaller character for a game on a smaller platform and is not just a puppy to be cute. Although that is, of course, part of the charm. Those that like the original may be a bit disappointed that the next Okami game is on a handheld and at the things the previous game had that were removed to compensate. Gone is the digging, the swimming, getting food for your astral pouch, picking up things with your mouth, the extensive platforming, the dojo to purchase combat and ability upgrades, collecting stray beads and sun fragments, the fishing, the barking, the pissing, the... pooping... yeah, best 2 million yen I ever spent for that ability. That's not to say that Okami then doesn't retain most of the basic mechanics and gameplay from Okami. For one, restoring the land and helping people gives you praise, which after collecting enough of, levels you up to gain more health points and ink pots. Although in Okami then it's much more streamlined as it automatically increases your health and ink when you fill a bar. While in Okami you had precise numbers of praise earned and can choose what to spend praise on to upgrade. That and you had many ways to earn praise in the first game, such as digging up and blooming the ever subtle clovers and feeding animals, which is sure to please animal lovers. Tiger. Tiger, tiger, tiger. Bird. Birdie. Birdie, birdie. Okami then still has a fair amount of opportunities to earn more praise, even if it's mainly help people, purifying nature, and blooming trees. Oh, and I hope you like cherry blossoms because both games have a lot of them. Lots and lots of cherry blossoms. You know, like these. Cherry blossoms. There's one in my front yard as I'm working on the Okami games. Figured I'd show you this. It looks pretty. Eh. Although side quests have taken a step down in variety, as a lot of them simply rely on finding a set of items or collectible masterpiece pieces. Some of the former are even required to progress the game and can seem like padding. To make up for that though is sending certain people and even animals to the starting town of Yakushi Village, which you do to make the village grow and prosper. Besides that though, the gameplay can start to feel a little mundane. Every now and then you do get moments of short minigame-like events to mix things up along the adventure, but aren't quite as involved as the minigames in Okami. Props for at least including them to not make the game feel very redundant. One of the main goals for Chibi in his adventure is to gain abilities from the offspring of the brush gods that gave his mother those techniques and most of them work the same way as the last game. But because our little buddy isn't as powerful, ink does not regenerate, on old hand mode at least, and you have a time limit to perform a brush technique which is usually 30 seconds, but 15 during battles. But that's still more than enough time to do brush actions, so the time limit is never really an issue unless you fumble a lot with drawing. Neither is running out of ink, as there are items and usually pots or respawning small enemies in most areas that you can attack outside of battles to recover health and ink. And if you do somehow run out of ink without being able to replenish it and get in an unwinnable situation, you can redo the area with full ink again without having to reload your last save point. In addition to the traditional brush techniques, a few new ones have been added to make up for the lack of others, such as magnetism to attract and repel things, and guidance for your partners, a feature heavily implemented into the game. Throughout your adventure, you'll have several partners join, or ride, with you on your quest, which was something you did have now and then Okami in addition to your Navi-like partner Isun, even if they were just taking characters to plot-related areas, performing an attack by drawing a line to the enemies, or even fight alongside you. In Okami Den, it's more focused with the majority of the game being with a companion helping you, whether it be in combat with an initial attack at the end of your attack combo, or area puzzles involving switches and dungeons, which admittedly makes this game feel even more Zelda-like. Each partner you get have their own unique abilities to help keep the somewhat repetitive nature of guiding them to switches and treasures fresh, even if some of these are basically kid versions of characters from Okami, but that helps to keep the tone of the game a kid version of Okami, and I don't mind that personally. 
Partners also become essential during boss battles, and maintaining yourself and your partner can make things a bit challenging, even if the rest of the game is pretty easy. Your companion's help also factors in how much bonus money you get at the end of battles in addition to how long and how much damage you took, which carried over from Okami as well. Combat is basically the same, but even more simplified as you just have attacking with one of your three weapon types, dodging, and using your brush, but it's still satisfying nevertheless. And while you don't find any weapons in addition to two different ones, you can perform certain finishing brush attacks on defeated enemies to collect demon parts, similar to how you acquired demon fangs before. These are used to upgrade your weapons into new, more powerful ones. Though finding out which brush technique gives you demon parts and collecting them can get a bit grindy. As for the controls, it works well considering the amount of buttons and touchscreen used. One thing that you need to get used to though is switching between the buttons and the stylus when you use the brush, so keeping that in your hand at the ready is a must for ease of use. One thing to note is that because both shoulder buttons activate the brush, it can be accessible for both right and left handed people. Using the celestial brush with a stylus functions as good as you might expect it would, even if there were a few times it decided to be finicky, but it's still pretty lenient. Thankfully you can erase your mistakes on the fly to make things a little easier. However, unlike in Okami where you can move the camera in brush mode, you're stuck in the freeze frame that can have obstructed views or bad angles. But besides the occasional quirk, the stylus brush mechanic performs nearly perfectly for an Okami game. Besides the brush, the touchscreen is used for the camera as indicated by the arrows along the edges of the bottom screen, but only in open areas in combat and because you have to use the touchscreen, you can't attack while adjusting the camera, or even move if you're left-handed. Plus, the left and right is inverted and I prefer not inverted camera control, although the game's camera mostly adjusts and stays behind you and is even fixed at times, so with the exception of getting blindsided in combat, the camera is not much of an issue. The rest of the bottom screen is utilized to the fullest, with it conveniently showing the map when exploring the lands of Nippon in dungeons and enemy health during fights. You can also use both buttons and the touchscreen to navigate the menu to your liking. As for the button controls, they function nicely enough, however moving a character in a 3D game with the D-pad can be a bit imprecise, which in turn makes the platforming much more simplified this time around. I did find that moving with the 3DS analog stick was a little smoother in comparison and I never had any major issues while playing anyway, which is also true for the presentation. While obviously lower res than Okami, this game fully uses the DS's capabilities to resemble the art style and world as closely as it can on the portable device and I think they did a good job all things considering. Even when several parts of an area are divided in sections, the game manages to make some impressive draw distance and visuals for a handheld game. The sound also maintains its great resistance of Japanese instrumental music and sound effects from the previous game, albeit a bit repeated and compressed respectively. The game is certainly impressive on its own, but after playing through both Okami games a couple of times, there are a few things I felt were slightly more flawed here. The game does have many new and familiar places and people, but it can often feel like it's reusing places and things from the last adventure a bit too much at times. I guess that's to be expected to please fans, and I didn't mind it too much since it still feels a bit different being on another system. Another thing is that money isn't as useful. Besides purchasing a couple brush technique upgrades, there really isn't much else to buy besides items that you can find elsewhere from treasure chests or don't really need in combat. So most of the time I only sold the treasures I found to the merchants I came across and only bought the occasional healing item. Granted in Okami that's how you earned a lot of your money too and the problem of not really needing to buy items besides animal food for feeding was there as well. But at least you had the occasional new weapon to buy or spending your money elsewhere. I suppose it's still convenient to be able to buy items frequently in Okami if you really need them. Saving has taken a downgrade too because unlike in Okami where you can have multiple save files, in this one you only have one. So keep that in mind if you have family or friends that may want to borrow the game. The story and characters, while still written well, can drag on even more than the first game, especially during cutscenes that while you can skip entirely, you can't speed up the dialogue. There is also dialect like from this guy that for some reason talks like the average 12 year old YouTube commenter and given the setting is really off-putting. Still, I generally had no problems with the actual story and thought it was nice, but there is one thing that I wouldn't say irritated me, more so confused me a little. Fair warning though, this is a spoiler for Okami to near the end of the game. I don't intend to explain everything about it in great detail or spoil anything else, it's just something that as an Okami fan I want to address. Late in the game when you time travel, which was a plot point in the first game too, you come across Shiranoi, the first incarnation of Amaterasu. The kicker here is that because Chibi is the third incarnation, Shiranoi is regarded as his grandfather. Yeah. This is a bit confusing because in Okami, Amy is basically just Shiranoi reborn, a reincarnation if you will. In Okami Den, Chibi is regarded as Amaterasu's son and therefore that technically makes Shiranoi his grandson, even though Chibi is basically the third version of him. I can only imagine the meaning of these two going more like this. Grandpa? No fool! It's me! Grandpa! No! Despite that plot hole and the few additional missteps the game had, I still liked Okami Den. 
Most of the flaws are due to the fact the game had to compensate for being on a less powerful handheld device, but the effort to make this a full-fledged sequel on this system is still impressive in that regard. As a DS game, it's a good action-adventure with nice colorful visuals, a heartwarming story, and makes great use of the system's hardware. I'd recommend Okami Den if you like Zelda-ish games or if you enjoyed the first Okami. As a follow-up and transition to a smaller platform, it's pretty solid. Not to mention being easy to get into and exposited well if you haven't played Okami before and play this one first. Also, puppy, if you like cute stuff. Although it wouldn't surprise me if fans wanted a more traditional sequel on a current or next-gen console, though we may still get one someday. The ending of Okami Den does hint the possibility of another game, and since then Amaterasu was in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and more recently there's the aforementioned Okami HD. Personally, I can see great potential in another Okami game for the series on the more powerful Nintendo 3DS, or even the Wii U with the same touchscreen controls for the brush. We can only hope and see at this point, and still enjoy the two games we do have in the meantime. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to replay the Gears of War games again to reclaim my man card. I'll see you guys on the next They Made a Sequel.